So today, Brad, we get to show off our first gift from a fan. Because a friend of mine watches these videos and bought me a mug. So yeah. Thanks, mate. Awesome. <laughs> With beach season right around the corner, I'm guessing that a decent number of people watching this are thinking about eating healthier or getting in shape. Beach season? Yeah, beach season. There's a literal hurricane outside the window. That's not a joke right now. There's a tail end of a hurricane hitting the UK as we speak and it knocked over all Brad's bins. You know what though? British people fucking don't care about that. We will go to the beach and we will have a barbecue regardless of the weather. It is always beach season in the UK. There's actually a great picture of me and a couple of friends, including Brad, at a barbecue when it's raining that he's going to put right here. We don't give a shit. We just cover it with cardboard and have the barbecue anyway. You can't stop us. No one will stop a British person having a barbecue. Damn you, Poseidon. For anyone worried that it might be difficult to adjust to a new, healthier eating regime, I guarantee that you will not react as badly as parents of children studying at Kids Brook School did when celebrity chef Jamie Oliver tried to get them to eat salad. I can honestly say that 97% of people in this room today had a totally, unacceptably unbalanced diet. If sex has taught me anything, it's that people always react badly to being told that they're doing something wrong. And even worse when you suggest that what they're doing may cause long-term health effects. However, the parents at that school took this to a whole new pork-filled level. In a deep-fried nutshell, in the year 2005, Jamie Oliver, celebrity chef and floppy fringe owner, embarked on a quest to teach kids the dangers of eating chocolate burgers and chocolate-covered burgers. As part of this campaign, Jamie Oliver pressured schools to stop selling junk food and spearheaded an initiative to have school dinners made from locally sourced, fresh ingredients instead of just being reheated shit from the night before. I'm doing this because I want the kids to eat better food. I want the kids to be healthier, I want them to grow up with better habits, I want us to have a fucking better, cooler, cleverer, healthier nation. I don't know about you Brad, but that sounds like the most reasonable thing in the entire world. Yeah, that sounds like a good thing. Yeah, it's just a guy going, okay, let's make it so that kids at school have nice school dinners that aren't reheated frozen shit, and it's actually made from locally sourced fresh ingredients. As Jamie Oliver expected, kids didn't react well to being told they couldn't have pizza for lunch every single day. Well, there's no surprise there. Yeah, because kids fucking love pizza. And that was Jamie Oliver's point. It's like, kids don't understand that eating bad food every single day can have long-term health effects. The thing that surprised him, though, was because he fully expected kids to not be on board with it. Because obviously, kids don't understand. What really surprised him is that parents also got annoyed that he was telling their kids they couldn't eat pizza. Why? Because they were, like, like upset and annoyed at him for daring to suggest that maybe them feeding their kids pizza every day or allowing them to eat it made them bad parents. So instead of being grateful for the advice from a guy who knows what he's talking about, they were annoyed because he was implying they might not be able to do that, like look after their kids properly. Yeah. So like, he came in and said, look, these kids' school dinners are terrible. And I think a point he made in his show was, your kids literally eat worse than prisoners. Because, uh, and this is true in America as well, like prison food is terrible and it's usually made by the same people who make school food. It's just reheated shit. The difference is prison food is healthier because prison food has to conform to really strict dietary minimums. So prison food, even though it tastes like crap, has to be at the very least nutritionally beneficial and it has to contain everything a human body needs. School food kind of does, but kids have a choice, prisoners don't. And what's a kid gonna choose? They're gonna choose the reheated crappy tinned vegetables that have vitamins and minerals in them but taste like shit or pizza and chips. While that there's a choice of junk food compared to the cooked food, they will always go for the junk food. They will always go um, for this, yeah. And there's a really depressing but really telling thing where you can just see he's just so defeated and he just points at this little kid and goes, of all the people here, he's the kid who's eating the best. And the cameraman zooms in and he's a kid and he's emptying out tomato sauce packets onto white bread. And he says, if anyone's got that, he's got the healthiest meal here, because at least he's eating a fucking vegetable. Or a fruit, as it were, sorry. I sat there with that sweet boy eating tomato sauce sandwiches. I don't blame him. He's the most intelligent boy in this room. No one wants to be told they're doing a bad job. No parent wants to be like, you're a bad parent. And that's, like, he was really, really good about this. He comes and he's like, I understand, like, it's not your fault. You're not a bad parent, you're just, like, ill-informed. I will show you and teach you how to prepare high, like, good quality, nutritious meals on the cheap. And I'll help your school do the same. And I've got deals with farmers and things like that to get fresh, good quality produce brought into the schools so the food doesn't taste like shit. And the parents like, no, fuck you. 
fuck you, how dare you, how very dare you, how dare you suggest that I'm a bad parent for letting my kid eat food he enjoys. And he's like, the kid enjoys it because they don't know any better, because they're a kid. What's your favourite food in the world? McDonald's or Kentucky? <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> Pizza. And there's a very famous image um, that went around while this was happening of parents literally handing takeaways from like a local chip shop in wrappers through the bars of a school to their kids. And that was the image that went around. I think Jamie Oliver said, I can't believe this is a thing. Oliver would later recount that one of the most frustrating aspects of the entire process was parents refusing to admit that as a direct result of their poor diet, many of their children were little fat fucks just begging for the merciless sting of a wet towel. <laughs> So did Jamie Oliver actually confront any of these parents about this? And there was one mother who acted as a sort of spokesperson for like all the parents who were annoyed at him trying to change the way school dinners were. And Jamie Oliver was really frank and just said, look, your kids at school at the moment, with the system the way it is, eat worse than rapists and murderers in prison. Because there's no system in place that makes them eat healthy, nutritious food. And if you're given the choice, they're always going to pick the unhealthy option. And I'm trying to educate you as parents. And the mother's like, well, fuck you, you're wrong. My kids aren't healthy, they're perfectly fine. And Jamie Oliver says, well, actually, all of your kids and you are medically obese. And do you know what she said to that? What? You're not a doctor. And that's it, she just shut down the entire argument. Like, you're not a doctor, so your opinion doesn't matter. Yeah, but he, he, he does have eyes. Yeah, and also as well, he used the phrase medically obese, <laughs> which kind of suggests that that's a medical term by an actual doctor. And she completely refused to listen to it. And in fact, that's the thing he found the most frustrating. Jamie Oliver's point always was, it's not the kid's fault, and they're the people he felt sorry for. Because obviously kids can't help it if their parents feed them shit food. And if they've got those poor lessons instilled in them, they're going to continue to eat shit food for the rest of their life. And when they have kids, those lessons will continue. Kids are not born to only eat burgers and nuggets. They're just marketed from the day they're born. So all he's trying to teach me is things like basic portion control, um, like eat your five a day, fruit and veg, how to cook a proper meal, stuff like that. And parents are like, no. No, I don't want any of this. How dare you insinuate I'm a poor parent? And in fact, that's the thing he found the most depressing. And there's a great story from him, I think that perfectly encapsulates the frustration he felt. And he said uh, he was getting yelled at by a mother coddling a newborn baby who was like furious with him for daring to suggest he could in any way tell her how to raise her children. Like, how dare you insinuate that the way I raise my children is in any way wrong or that I'm a bad mother for the way that I feed my own children. And he said that while this was happening, she was bottle feeding her newborn baby, Coca-Cola. Are you retarded? And you know what the worst part is? He says, since that happened while I was making that show, I have seen that multiple times, especially in America, where they reacted even more angrily to the idea of this British man coming in and telling them they were doing things wrong. And the part is, people are watching this and we all know those kind of people. We've all got that person on Facebook who's like, you can't tell me how to raise my kids. How dare you insinuate that I'm a bad mother the way I raise my children. And it's like, I'm not saying you're a bad mother, I'm just saying that. And Jamie Oliver was you're not a bad mother. It's just, you've been failed by the education system. And I'm trying to correct that. No, fuck you. I will give my kid all the food they want. My precious little angel will eat whatever they want. We all know that person. The worst people are the kids who never got told no. It's the kids who get whatever they want all the time. They always get raised. They're the worst human beings imaginable. We all know that person. People watching this, they probably know a kid like that who they just don't like because they're just raised and just never be told no. So, like, oh, mummy. Can I get an ice cream? Of course you can. Like when you're studying Asda yeah. and you see those kids who just scream because they want chocolate bars. And it's like, I get it. It's e to give them the chocolate, it's easier. But like, you kind of have that obligation where this is a, a tiny human being who doesn't fucking know anything. It's on you to teach them better. And people get offended at the idea of someone telling them that. You know, if you're giving you know, very young kids bottles and bottles of fizzy drink, you're a fucking arsehole. So just to recap, Brad, because this is fucking amazing, a mother who was bottle feeding her newborn baby, Coca-Cola, yelled at a professional chef who was trying to get children in a school to eat vegetables and called him irresponsible for daring to suggest that parents like her weren't raising their kids properly. I don't know about you, audience, but I don't know how the entire universe just didn't collapse from the irony of that situation. But I'm guessing the gravity surrounding the immensity of the fuck that Jamie Oliver didn't give at that moment somehow saved the entire universe. So we're just going to go straight into a story now about how I personally credit Jamie Oliver with helping me lose a load of weight as a kid. But if you've got any comments or feedback or suggestions, you can leave them below, I guess. 
But yeah, I watched the documentary we're talking about in this video today uh, as a kid, and I did eat every single day at school Twizzlers, chips, and baked beans. And I remember that specifically, you must remember like, specifically Jamie Oliver singled out Twizzlers as being yeah. really, really bad. And apparently that they made like reconstituted turkey meat. And he said, here's how they're made, here's how unhealthy they are, they're shit, they're awful, they're bad for you. And I saw that, and I felt physically sick when I saw how bad they were. And from that day on, I just stopped eating school dinners. Because my school dinners was chips and beans every day. I weighed about 11, 12 stone when I was about 11 or 12, which is what I weighed, I think, up until I was about 23. And bear in mind, I grew about a foot and a half since then, and I was a right little fat butterball. I'm not kidding. I'll get, send you a picture you can put behind me right now, where I was short, bald, and fat. And my parents actually called me Pugsley from the Adams family, because that's who I look like. Um, I watched that, realised, oh my God, this food is terrible for me. Stopped eating that, went on to pack lunches. So started making sandwiches. And my dad was really supportive. He went, okay, son, yeah. Um, instead of like, giving you three quid a day for like, your school lunch, I'll buy shopping, I'll buy bread, I'll buy salad, and I'll buy stuff for you to make sandwiches. And basically, I lost about a stone in a year just from just eat healthy eating because I just watched that show. And that instilled in me the idea of like eating a slightly healthier, exercising a bit more. If it wasn't for him, I'd probably be really, still really overweight today because obviously it, to unlearn those lessons, I needed that shock, that jarring thing of being shown, this is how bad it is for you. So if, Jim Oliver, thank you very much. Watching that show is what gave me the kick in the ass. Like, okay, don't eat this stuff every single day, which is what I was doing at that point, And I was a right little fat knacker and now I'm not. So yeah, awesome.